there where fast food is available everywhere and our children quickly learn that it's socially acceptable to eat it at any time. <laughs> Horrific, right? But what's more scary is that your health and your children's health is in jeopardy. For that and more, stay tuned, B-W-I-Z-E. Eating junk food could not only cost you your health, but your money too. While the Navy has programs like Go For Green to help sailors make smart choices in the galley, health and nutrition doesn't end there. Websites like ChooseMyPlate.gov can help you make healthy choices no matter where you are. If you're looking for ways to save your hard-earned money, give healthy eating a try. So being smart about, you know, looking at the produce section at the store versus the cookie aisle at the store. Um, broccoli is going to be about a third of the price of a bag of Oreos. Um, you know, you're going to get a bag of carrots that are going to be about a half of the price of a bag of chips. So you're getting things that are actually nutritional for you that are saving you money in the long run, but also providing you so much more benefit to your health than those junk food options. Your smart choices could help you save big. And now, the wise presents. What up ladies and gentlemen, with your main man B-W-Y-Z-E, don't be a fool, but be wise. Uh, today we're actually going to talk about what you consume, what your children are consuming. Uh, this is probably going to be a part one and part two series, as was Filthy Rich. If you haven't seen Filthy Rich talking about the CCA and the, uh, the correctional system, please go view it. It'll be in the links above or on the side. Make sure you check it out. But first and foremost, before we get into the deep issues, I want to talk about the people. 94 subscribers to this day. It is January the 10th, 2017. 17. All my subscribers, thank you so much for subscribing. If I get to 100, then I will be able to personalize my YouTube so I can be able to better distribute uh, my YouTube to be able to spit out knowledge. But let's read some stats. Let's get to it. Okay, so McDonald's has more than 3,500 locations than the combined total of Burger King, Wendy's, Taco Bell, and Arby's combined. So that means McDonald's is one of the biggest franchises, largest franchise franchises in America. Wendy's has 14,000 locations. I'm sorry, Burger King has 14,000 locations. Wendy's has 6,500 locations. Taco Bell has 6,200 locations. And Arby's has 3,400 locations. McDonald's, all those four together, Burger King, Wendy's, Taco Bell, and Arby's. McDonald's has more, more franchises than any of those four franchises combined. That is ridiculous. So, average American spends $1,200 on fast food each year, and children, our future, consumes 12% of their calories from fast food. This blows my mind, ladies and gentlemen, because, you know, one of my, I've been an athlete all my life, and one thing that I've always tried to uh, discipline myself is to exercise. Now, of course, we, you know, we make New Year's resolutions, we make promises to ourselves, uh, but one thing is I've always, always been active, and to shortly put it in a nutshell about the technology that has brought about so much change uh, that in my generation, you know, we were almost forced uh, or threatened to come inside, you know, because we spent so much time outside being physically active, but now it's totally the opposite. You almost have to push kids out the door for them to go play outside because of all the technology. So there is no physical exercise uh, going on. And the consumption of junk food that is put into our kids. First element I want to go over, though, is how... Actually, before I want to get to the adults, I want to go to the kids because that's where our futures are. Lie, ladies and gentlemen, is in our kids. We have so much directed publicity... Uh, especially of food placed on our kids, so much pressure placed on our kids to eat a certain way. And from my perspective, this is just my thought, uh, I think it is actually peer pressure that forces kids to eat, aside from a lot of things, forces them to eat a certain way. Uh, because I've never seen kids that are vegan. I haven't seen kids that are eating actually well. I have actually I have seen kids, but it's not a lot, a lot of percentage because of the norm, and I and I believe it's because of the peer pressure that social media that we see every day to eat this certain type, have this certain type of lifestyle when it comes to eating, and our kids are surrounded by um, 
so much pressure of the food we eat. Think about it. Uh, there was a statistic I just read about there's more television or more media in the home than there actually are people. So there's cell phones, there's tablets, there's uh, TVs, and we all know that most of us are so exposed to media all day, every day. Our children is exposed to this. Now, us of the older version, we're a little bit more not as... Um, you know, we come from a generation to where there was just a TV. There was no laptops. There was no computers. There was no cell phones. Uh, and if there were at that time, it wasn't as flamboyant. The, the, the social media wasn't as flamboyant as it was. Um, so with that being said, the, the whole prospect, the prospectus of, of children being, you know, uh, swallowed in by the social media, what they eat. Uh, because, you know, these franchises like McDonald's uses social media to drew, draw people in, of course, to sell their product. And so if children nowadays are uh, are exposed to so much of this media and all they're seeing is McDonald's and Burger King and Taco Bell and uh, 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 Wendy's and, and things of this nature, then subliminally in their mind, the first thing that's all they want to eat uh, is going to be these junk food. So when we come back, I'm going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to read some statistics, and we're going to go over school lunches. Nastiest thing in the world. Hello, and welcome to another episode of No Word Feed Review. The other day, I was looking in the comments of one of my last videos, and two or three people were saying, I should eat healthier. First of all, I think that's overrated. I should be able to eat whatever I want. But just so you guys can say I have ate healthy, I'm going to try a Nature Valley Sweet and Salty Nut Granola Bar Peanut Flavor. So, in case you little health freaks out there are wondering, it has 170 calories. So, I, you know, let's just eat it. Get this over with. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Remember to don't be a fool, just be wise. Welcome back to uh, You Are What You Eat, part one. Um, as I was stating before, you know, our children are our future. So we got to make sure that we have to literally plant the seeds uh, within them to make sure of, of, of nurture and nature. That's including what they eat. And of course, um, we all know that food affects the mind psych psychologically of, uh, of, of what's being put in our body. And so we have to be able to be on guard and to be aware and conscious of what we put in our bodies. And I know it's a, you know, we have times where we just can't eat the right thing. But I would say with this education that I'm trying to drop or anybody else, especially when it comes to food and your well-being, uh, is that take heed of it? Don't just sit here and li and, and listen to my face talk and, and listen to my and look at my lips move. Like actually take the information that you're that you're listening to and been and, and, and being given, um, and go out there and do something about it and improve your well being because that is the whole uh, focus and goal of why I'm trying to drop knowledge. So don't be a fool, be wise. So uh, before we took the break. Uh, I actually was going to go over, and I am still going to go over, we're about to go into how school lunches. And for those of you parents out there who have children, I got some homework for you. Go to your child, regardless of what grade they're in, and ask them, say, hey, do you like your school lunches? Like, do you enjoy your school lunches? I want you to ask them that. And uh, I want you to respond to the question in the comments, and I actually want you to say, hey, y'all be wise, man. My kid, he hates it. He hates it. Actually, to go back on a note, I love strong bowling. Shout out to Crowley High School, CHS. They, they made the great strong bowling. However, it was so packed with fattening food that it made me, it tasted great, but it made me feel horrible. It made me feel sluggish. It made me feel tired. It made me feel like I didn't want to do anything but go use the best, do, but only to take my Browns to the Super Bowl. Uh, however, though, let's look at what actually, how actually school lunches, how how diet affects a child while he's in school. So this is an article from Campbellsville University. Shout out to them. 
um, who actually did this study on, it's called Healthy Body, Healthy Mind, the Impact of School Lunch on Student Performance. I'm not going to read the whole article. However, I am going to highlight uh, what their, in a nutshell, what their article was actually about. So to give you a little bit of history, 1945, President Harry S. Truman signed into law the National School, uh, National School Lunch Act, which created the National School Lunch Program in post-World War II America. Truman and Congress intended the bill to help absorb new form surpluses. So, in other words, I think he was trying to get a more natural feel uh, that provided work for the farmers, but also to provide fresh produce to put in the schools uh, so kids can have a... Uh, healthier lifestyle. Also on that note, 2010, Congress passed the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act. The bill made significant changes to school lunches for the first time in decades. So that should give you just a, a brief nutshell uh, as far as the legislative side of school lunches. Then give you some, uh, some, some stats on the state of school lunches. The School Nutrition Association, which is the SNA, is the largest professional organization for school lunch providers in the country with 55,000 members. The SNA offers a fact sheet of statistics about the current state of national school lunch program, and I'm going to only read three for time's sake. Through the program, nearly 100,000 schools and institutions serve lunches each day. Of the total, 30 million students served. 2 million are receiving free lunches. Uh, 5 million are receiving reduced price lunches. And 7 million pay full price for the school lunches. However, what is the impact? Now, we just read the, the prospectus. Or we just read the goal of the school lunches uh, and what their uh, plan is to do, which is basically... 1945, uh, you think with Harry S. Truman's uh, coming through to have uh, fresh produce from farmers that's homegrown. And uh, the 2010, the SNA is supposed to monitor exactly what kids eat. And remember, we are humans. We are people that respond to the results of what we do. And so if something is not working, then therefore we should change it. And that's the, by the way, that's the, uh, I'm not going to make you pay for this, but that's the definition of insanity to continue to do the same thing and continue to, to want to change but get the same results. So what is the impact of nutrition on students? So just briefly, the direct uh, effects, and actually I'll put a link up here to this report, 2014 report, Nutrition and Students' Academic Performance, which basically is, is a summary of how students uh, are affected by nutrition and especially what they're getting fed in school. So the direct effects, there are several direct effects that involve the immediate impact of nutrition on a daily performance of a student. Uh, mental and behavioral problems can be tracked back to an unhealthy nutrition and poor eating habits. Nutritional deficiencies in zinc, B vitamins, omega-3 fatty acids, and protein have been shown to affect the cognitive development of children. There is also evidence to suggest that diets and high amounts of trans and saturated fats can have a negative impact on condition. I want to stop right there before I continue. Okay, so we all know that I would say 90% of our food, if it's frozen, most likely, um, it has a lot of bad stuff in it. And what I mean by bad stuff, it had a lot... It had a lot of pesticides in it, uh, in the vegetables. It is not organically grown, and it is processed food. And so, therefore, it is not natural. It is, it is a man-made. It is, it is harmful to the body. So, as this said, I haven't really heard any fourth graders, any elementary students ever getting omega-3 fat acids uh, which helps their brain. Most of the time, what I see in school lunches, and I was a teacher for two years, and the stuff they was feeding these kids, I never made the connection of why they act the way they do. They feed them all this sugar. They're, you know, feeding them all this processed food that, of course, by statistic-wise and by research, affects kids' behaviors. So let me continue on. So there's also evidence to suggest that diet with high amounts of trans and saturated fats can have a negative impact on um, Cognitation. This will 
uh, harm the ability of students to learn at a pace necessary for school success. Scientists have also established a link between student behavior and nutrition. Access to proper nutrition can help students maintain psych psychological well-being and, and reduce aggression. This can have a positive effect on students by, avoid by avoiding discipline and school suspension. Now, I am going to actually pinpoint and concentrate on why I'm reading this simultaneously about the effects of... Uh, the inner city kids that come into schools and have the most problems. So let me reread this so I can make this connection. Scientists have also established a link between student behavior and nutrition. Access to proper nutrition can help students maintain psych psychological well-being and reduce aggression. We all know that as uh, black African American males, we are the most aggressive out of the population. And a lot of our young black males go into the schools and have problems. Now, Take this in a matter of fact, because we live in poverty, because there are no um, resources to teach us about nutrition properly, I believe this is a direct effect and a direct result of uh, young black males not being able to stay in school and not to be able to properly learn because of what they're eating. Um, we as African Americans, man, we eat the most garbage stuff. And don't get me wrong. I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love soul food too. But if you actually look at the stuff that we eat and you look at the restaurants in our neighborhoods, they do not um, complement or they do not supply um, what we need to be putting in our bodies. Um, number one, in the black community, we do not have our own health food stores. We may have Uncle Drew sitting on the side of the road, maybe somewhere in the hood that's selling wallet man is doing a certain season, but we do not have our own um, health food stores to get organic material for us to eat the right things. And I want to reference Dr. CB, and I might have a link somewhere in here so you can actually go research this on what you should eat, which is an alkaline diet, um, to actually for our bodies and our minds to be able to process and learn. Now, going back to the school system, think about think about our young black African-American males and the environment they come from. Because in the hood, you ain't got no uh, vegan stores. In the hood, you don't have no well-cooked meals. You know, we got to survive off of chicken wings and, chicken and, and fried chicken and fried pork chops and collard greens and, and everything of that nature. You know, so if we're putting all this stuff to our bodies, if these, if our kids are coming from an impoverished environment and they're not eating the right things, and as you can see, experts have already shown there's a direct connection between behavior and nutrition. So this can have a positive effect on students by avoiding discipline and school suspensions. I would say, hey, school system, try it. Take these kids from this environment who's having the most trouble, feed them correctly, Feed them correctly. And I'm not talking about I, 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 I am against any type of processed food. I am against if it's not organically grown, if it's not organic, um, I am totally against it. If it has pesticides, if it has any HGH type of uh, hormones or any type of unnatural hormones, I believe that is a effect on the body. And I'm a strong advocate for at least studying school system, uh, board of education. Uh, taking a starter group of kids, feeding them this type of food and feeding them in this type of food, let them go to school and see the effects that it has based off of one set of variables of nutrition and the other variables of set of nutrition. I guarantee you, if you, if you give them this junk food, what they've been eating, then you compare it to the students who have been eating the more the not processed, well organic, fully cooked of uh, 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 CB alkaline type diet, I guarantee you they will, you'll cut down on disciplinary problems and their cognitive thinking of how they perform in the classroom will be a lot, lot better. On that note, I've talked enough, 12 minutes to be, to be precise. Uh, we'll take a break. Go grab you something cool, calm, and collected glass of water. Remember, don't be a fool, be wise, stay tuned. Say you wanna get in, but love won't let you Hold your breath for tomorrow, let the future catch you to smile 
Just smile, just smile, just smile, just smile. I'm here right. with uh, Officer Herford. Officer Herford, what do you think about, you know, the obesity rate? And what do you think, uh, you know, um, the elite or the people upstairs need to do about, you know, getting us more healthy? Well, I think obesity is a, a epidemic in our country. I mean, the United States is one of the fattest countries in the world, apparently. Um, what they can do is offer more uh, civilians, more opportunities to take uh, maybe gym memberships, maybe eat healthy, promote more of that because memberships at gyms are just too high for the average person to afford. There's no way uh, a medium income family can uh, afford to go to the gym just by themselves if they have two or, two or more kids. Cool. Hey, we heard it first live here from Mr. Officer Mark Herford. Thank you for your time. Well, sir. as you can see there, my partner thinks that, uh, that you know, he gave his insight on what, you know, he felt as best as though, you know, needs to happen for uh, our nutrition and our obesity problem and so on and so forth. So getting back into it, you know, we just went briefly, briefly, briefly over um, what's going on on a smaller level with our kids and remember our kids are our future so I just briefly did that with a nutshell and a nutshell uh, but it's your responsibility ladies and gentlemen to research I can only give you a portion but it's your research I am just a vehicle to get you there just a guide to get you where you need to go so you can improve your well-being and uh, your lifestyle now I'm going to touch on a point of us as Americans going to the adult side um, us adults, uh, we live in a rat race society where everything is instant. Everything is instant. We want, I believe technology is a part of this, that we have made things so easy and so convenient that we are now almost manipulated and we are expecting everything at an instant time. Uh, and it's kind of cliche because we all know in order to do something or get somewhere that we have to metaphorically plant a seed and watch it grow well even with that uh coincidentally even with that using that analogy um we know that patience um is a virtue and so even with food even with understanding that we don't need to go to mcdonald's every time or we don't because we're lazy and we, we just want stuff right now um i feel as though is that the reason why we have so much it's a two it's twofold the reason why we have so much uh obesity and so many medical problems uh in our communities and in our society is because we live in such a rat race and we're manipulated by technology and the media uh, to have everything at its disposal right now I hate microwave dinners number one as I uh, mentioned uh, earlier about uh, the processed food uh, anything that is frozen all that stuff is processed all that stuff is hungry man dinners uh, TV dinners all that stuff is processed and so now we are at a stage to where uh, their studies has been shown uh, in China, there's a net, and I can't remember, I can't recall uh, the actual documentary that's on Netflix. Um, but it talked about a study that they had a, a, a medical doctor in China, I believe, studied. It was a 30-year study of how the Asians or the Oriental people went from a rice grain diet. And then when these fast food franchises started to come and... Uh, take over of how the people changed their diet and how uh, the um, the lives of the Orientals or the people in that area start to deteriorate over time. And each year it went up. The more the more the fast food places came, the more uh, the more people got sick. The more people died. The more uh, people were being hospitalized, so on and so forth. So there's a direct correlation between. Uh, fast food and junk food um, aside from more you know uh, what I call ground food or more organic food but the reason why I truly 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 believe 
that people live in a society that is so overbeast, so overweight, but yet emphasizes that we need to exercise. It's kind of like it parallels, it's kind of like two contradicting parallels because you will see a 24 hour fitness or a uh, Planet Fitness, and then right across the street, you'll see a uh, McDonald's or a Burger King. Um, at Planet Fitness, uh, a guy told me, a guy that actually has a guy that actually has a membership there says there's like Pizza Tuesdays. Now, from my ideology and my rational thinking, the coincidence or the irony of having pizza at a place to where you're actually trying to not encourage fast food from a person who already is having a trouble with food or his weight. Uh, to me, I think it's setting a double standard. That's just my opinion. That's BY's opinion. Um, but back, getting back to the point, I think the reason why we have so much so much, so much um, medical problems amongst kids and adults is that we live in a fast-paced world. And with that being as it is, we have no time to cook properly, cook with efficiency, and do not have the education to understand, don't have the time to actually educate ourselves and understand what must we eat. So for our convenience, us that works overnight and us that works 12 and 14 hour shift we don't have to we don't have time to go home and cook ourselves a well balanced and good meal so what's more convenient we'll stop at a Popeyes or we'll stop at a KFC or we'll stop at a, a McDonald's to get a Big Mac um, and we eat like this for so long um, we eat like this over a time our minds get used to it um, and there there is actually chemicals in food that will actually tell our brains that hey you need to get this you need to get more of this you this this is great this is good food uh will actually talk to your brain and tell your brain this is actually good food and if you ever notice have you ever noticed that you went to go eat some junk food and you ate and you got full real fast you ever noticed that i've experienced that a couple times that i've actually went to go eat uh burger king or i actually went to go eat taco bell or wendy's um and, uh, you know, have actually gotten full within 15 minutes. And in the next 15 minutes, I was hungry again. That's because that the biological process of what the food has done for my body uh, is actually uh, ha hasn't actually met my body's requirements. Um, and if you notice, and I'm just passing here and, I'm, and I know I'm going over a lot of stuff and I try to be more detailed in... The, uh, and you are what you eat too but the food pyramid has actually changed over time so you know at the top of it was you know sugars, wines uh, uh, especially sugars and wines and things of that nature, alcoholic beverages was put at the top to use sparingly and at the bottom it was like grains cereals, breads uh, the next level was like fruits and things of that nature, well if we live in a system that basically puts sugar in everything, then that is a contradiction from what the guidelines are. Because if they're encouraging us to use as less sugar as possible, but yet you have sugar in everything, you have cornstarch in everything, which is, which is a synthetic type of sugar. And then we wonder why so many people are getting diabetes and people are getting diabetes in their 20s and their teens and you have kids that are uh, diabetic but I guarantee you I guarantee you with the proper education the proper diet the alkaline diet and proper exercise that you can and will be your well-being will improve and that's both for uh, kids who are in school and that's both for adults you will change immensely my wife makes a smoothie with flaxseed uh, um, organic fruit um, chia seed, uh, oatmeal, everything in it is organic, and I can almost go the whole day without eating, but my body feels great. My body feels good. Um, and so I want to be able to help you guys. Uh, I just don't want to sit here and chit-chat and chatter. I want you guys to help me along this process and help up to help other people to be educated. So 
you are what you eat part one that is the basis if you like this video make sure you let me know and you like it uh, make sure you continue to subscribe to the channel make sure you check out my other videos but I really really want to touch on this point of eating healthy because that is the first thing that we as humans crave is a hunger for food so part one you are what you eat stay tuned make sure you subscribe thank you very very much for tuning in make sure you leave comments and share this video remember don't be a fool just be wise peace